everyone and welcome to another very beautiful chess game of Paul Morphy and in this game Paul Morphy has the white pieces and his opponent is a player named George Hammond and this game was played in New York in 1857 in the first American Chess Congress in October 7. Paul Morphy starts the game with playing e4, e5, knight to f3. Knight to c6, bishop to c4, Italian opening, bishop to c5, b4, Evans gambit. George Hammond captures the pawn, bishop takes on b4, c3, attacking the bishop, bishop to a5, d4, e takes on d4, and Paul Morphy castled. Bishop to b6, c takes on d4, knight g to e7. Knight to g5, d5, e takes on d5, attacking the knight, knight to a5, attacking the bishop, and Paul Morphy didn't move his bishop, instead he played d6, and that's a discover attack on f7, George Hammond captures the bishop with the knight, and Paul Morphy played queen to a4, that's check also attacking the knight, c6 and queen takes knight on c4 and now paul morphy is double attacking the knight and also f7 black is in a very difficult situation so george hammond captures on d6 but let's take it back if knight to d5 then rook to e1 is very unpleasant for black if bishop to e6 of course knight takes bishop f takes on e6, rook takes on e6. So if king to f8, then bishop to a3 and threatening some discovery attacks to the king. And it doesn't look good for black. So queen takes knight on c4. Queen takes on d6. And Paul Morphy played. Queen takes on f7. Check. King to d8. Bishop to a3, attacking the queen and also attacking the knight. So Hammond played queen to f6, queen takes queen, g takes on f6, and then knight to f7, forking the king and the rook. George Hammond played king to c7, knight takes rook, and Paul Morphy is a rook up. But Hammond played bishop takes on d4, attacking the rook on a1. And actually you can't defend this rook, but Paul Morphy played bishop takes knight. So maybe white could play knight to c3. Then bishop takes knight. Bishop takes knight on e7. Bishop takes rook, rook takes bishop. And white is still winning. Bishop takes rook and Paul Morphy is a piece up. And maybe Hammond needs to resign. But of course, Hammond didn't resign. And in 1850s, in the Romantic era of chess, they won't resign easily. At that time, they are fighting until the end, until the last move. So Hammond didn't resign, and Paul Morphy played knight to d2, bishop to e5, knight to f7, attacking the bishop, bishop to e6, attacking the knight, knight takes on e5, f takes on e5, h3, h5. Rook to e1, attacking on e5, rook to g8, lining the rook with the king. Paul Morphy captures on e5, and Hammond played bishop to d5. Well, bishop takes on h3 was the better move, but then bishop to g5, bishop to e6, bishop to f4, king to d7. And white is still better, but black has some chances. So after rook takes on e5, Hammond played bishop to d5, attacking on g2. And Paul Morphy is simply defending with the knight, knight to e4. And after this move, Hammond had enough, and he resigned. And let me show you the possible continuation. If let's say b6, then bishop to d6, king to c8, f3, rook to g6, rook to e8, check. King to b7, rook to e7, king to a8, 
If king to a6, then bishop to b8. Bishop takes on e4. Rook takes on a7, king to b5, f takes on e4. And white is winning. So maybe king to a8 is the most logical move. Then bishop to e5. Bishop takes on a2, knight to d6, rook to g8, rook to c7, bishop to d5, knight to c8. And if h4, then rook takes on a7, that's checkmate. So black has to capture the knight, and then rook takes rook. And this is completely losing for black. And maybe Heman saw all of these moves, and then he decided to resign. Maybe that's why he resigned. So after this move, knight to e4, after Paul Morphy played knight to e4, Hammond resigned. And this is the last position of the game. And I hope you have enjoyed watching this video. And I hope to see you next time. Take care.